Hi everybody, welcome back to my channel. How the hell are you? How the hell are you? Honestly. So I thought I would come on here and just give you a little bit of a, a story time. Uh, 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 what is going on, um, or what has gone on, a, a history of me, a want from you. Anyways, I thought I would come here and tell you a little story <clears throat> about my childhood. Now, disclaimer, there is some sensitive subject matter in here. I mean, nothing terrible, but like, how do I, I, I never want to offend anyone on this channel. I want this to be the most open place ever. Like, I'm talking like, I am so NDP liberal mother effer, like, I never want anyone to feel like I am talking BS on them or anything, but I am an adult and I have a story to tell of when I was a child and some people may think I am a rotten person um, after this because of it's about religion, and and I am not anymore a very religious person. Um, I am all about the universe and karma. I do unto others as I want them to do unto me, as to I treat others with respect all the time. Karma is my religion. But that is not to say that I have not had my religious forks in the road. So if you want to hear one of the most embarrassing freaking stories of my life, um, tune in and uh, yeah, welcome to uh, my past. All right guys, so I'm sitting here Thinking that I want to do another surprise bag thing, and and a lot of this stuff comes from my mother and my sister. And I want to tell a story about when I was a child, um, but I also want to paint you a picture. So, in my family, I am the, I would say, like not to toot my own horn, but I am the most outgoing. I have always been an artiste, a performer, I was a singer, an actor, I wanted to be a model. I, I'm a Linda Evangelista, I'm perfect, I can't do anything wrong, like girl, you get it. But like as a child, I was always center stage. I was trying to do anything to get my parents' attention, my sister's attention, or generally anybody in the general public's attention. I'm an attention But I have always been that person. And I've always noticed in life, I'm very easily picked on. And not even picked on, just chirped. My friends chirp me, my family chirps me, my boyfriend chirps me, strangers chirp me, my work coworkers chirp me. Beca and I have a feeling it's because I exude this confidence, though either people want to bring me down or they want to like remind me that I'm a human being. So I'm, I'm very outgoing. So my family has this strange, I don't know what that has to do with what I'm trying to say. It kind of does, it kind of does. Keep, keep up, keep up, keep up. So my family has this tendency to want to post on Facebook embarrassing things about me. For instance, my family likes to talk about how when I was a child I used to pretend like I was in Hanson or Backstreet Boys or the Spice Girls. I would just sing in my bedroom as if I was at Madison Square Garden or I was at like the ACC. You know what I mean? Like I'm, I'm at the Apollo. Like I'm just, I'm performing for millions of people all over the world. I'm on a world, bitch, I'm on a sold out world tour, okay? But I'm in my bedroom in Kensington, Prince Edward Island. I would do anything to pretend I was in a show. So I would do that. I will tell you, there was this one time I was alone, okay? Home alone, by myself, and I am killing it. I may have even set up a keyboard to pretend like I was Taylor Hansen. Now I was probably 12, 13 years old at the time. So like, uh, going through something. I am rocking out in a sold out world tour. You know what I mean? Like I'm at like the Molson Ample Theater right now. I don't even know. I think it's called the Budweiser stage now, but like I'm, I, I'm on a sold out show. Like, hi, I'm in the zone. I am going crazy. 
all of a sudden, I swear to God, I must have hit the highest note, my sister whacks open the door and my sister, my dad, and this guy who lived with us, Brian, were standing in the window or in the doorway pointing and laughing at me. I'm talking like the most embarrassing moment of my life. But it actually gets worse. That is the appetizer, the calamari, the the lobster and crab bruschetta dip of the story that is the most embarrassing. So my family has this tendency to want to post things on my Facebook and on things. Hey Brad, remember when you did this? So that was talked about. Hey Brad, remember when you did this? So that was talked about. But I think it's time to tell the true story of the time I ordered the Mormon Bible on the television. So it was like a hot summer day. The cicada was screaming. You know, the, the lawn was being mowed and I, being a child of the 90s, was stuck indoors watching infomercials because that's what you do. So I don't know like where my family was or whatever, but a commercial came on and it was like talking about how like family is everything and God is everything and this day is beautiful and it's everything. And there was like, call here and order your free Mormon Bible. And I was like, okay, let me order this Bible. I need to tell you a story within a story, okay? So my family growing up, my parents had us very young. I had a loving home, but my parents at like 23 had three children, okay? Three kids. And by the time I was 11, my mom was only like 30 years old. My dad was maybe like 34. And I'm an 11 year old. I'm 33 years old and I could not even imagine having like a 13 year old, a 15, like, but my parents did it. And they did it amazingly. So don't come for them. But they worked a lot and I felt like I didn't really get to spend that much time with them when I was a child. I remember one time getting into one of the worst arguments of my life because like my parents were never around. And like the anxiety and how I feel about that argument that we had when I was in the third grade, I'll never forget it. I think I made my mom cry. Like it was, it was a, the most selfish moment of my life. I didn't understand why my parents weren't Want, didn't want to hang out with us more. Why are they were always working and all they wanted to do was hang out with them and they just could not vocalize what they had to do for us. So like, it's like, a, it, it makes me cry to this day to think about that, that argument that I had with my mom and dad. I remember my sisters being there and just, it was tough. Anyways, moving on. This is about me. <laughs> so my family, had a, we had a tradition. On Sundays we went to church and then after church we went to this restaurant uh, called Johnny Bo's in Simcoe and we went for brunch. And that was the highlight of my week. Now, my parents also had a tendency to tell me what I was like when I was a child, like who I was and stuff like that. So like, they were like, Brad loves going to church. Brad, this is where shit gets bad, okay? So Brad loves going to church and, oh, we go to church because Brad loves it. It wasn't the church that I loved. I did not like church at all. I'm a fidgety, like anxious, like hyperactive person. Church was a nightmare for me. I had to sit there and I had to be quiet and there was ups and downs. We're Catholic, like it's a, it's a chore, okay? Catholic church is a chore, mass is a chore. And I was a child. My favorite part about it was going to brunch after. I got waffles, breakfast sausage, I could eat all the melon and watermelon that I wanted. Like, and it was just so fun to be with my family. And my dad was like, my dad is one of the funnest people to go to a restaurant. He is the person that goes to a restaurant and a server dreams about. He is chirping you, he is going at you, like he's just the best person. So being his child and being so proud of how like my dad was the coolest person in establishments and with the public and my mom is a server so she got it and like being in a restaurant with my family is so much fun. So that's what I live for. 
And then it stopped because my parents had to go to work and my parents didn't have the time to take us to church or the money to take a family of five out to get a br like an all you can eat brunch, like buffet. Like I was so naive and so stupid at the time, but cut to this beautiful day and the Bible thing comes on and it's talking about how it'll bring your family closer together. And I'm like, this is it. I'm gonna order this Bible and we're gonna start going back to brunch because my parents will start taking me back to church and after church we go to brunch and I'm gonna get all the waffles I want, all the breakfast sausage I want, and we're gonna be a family again. So cut to like a week later, my parents get a phone call. I'm in my bedroom, probably pretending like I'm Taylor fucking Hansen or something. And I'm in my bedroom and the phone rings. And then my parents call me downstairs and they're like, did you order a Bible? Did you order a Bible? And I did. And, and I was like, well, I, I, I don't know. Like, yeah, maybe I did, maybe I didn't, whatever. I, I don't. There is a knock on the door. So the Bible comes. But what they don't tell you on the commercial is that with that Bible comes two Mormons, okay? So now I'm like walking down the stairs and my parents are like, Brad, you need to come to the door right now. You have company. I am like 10 or 11. What 10 or 11 year old has company, okay? So I walk around the corner and I'm in the kitchen and it's in this house. And there are two Mormons at the door with my now new Bible, okay? And my sisters are laughing at me. Ashley's being the most. This is, uh, and she's laughing at me and my parents are like, they're kind of mad because they're like, we're not Mormons, but they're also kind of like, <laughs> you idiot, you have to go deal with this. Like this is, these are my parents. My parents are like tough love. Like. You did this, now you have to deal with the consequences and talk to these Mormons about why you want to become a gosh darn Mormon. So I'm like bawling because I'm 11 and like everybody around me is like laughing at me and like honestly all I can remember are the Mormons being the coolest about it. Like they're not mad, that, like and like that's the type of person I am. I was like these people are going to be so mad at me for wasting their time and they weren't, they were actually really cool. And like we sat down and they were like, just tell me why. And, my, and I made, they made my parents leave the room. Like they were like, if we're gonna talk, if you're gonna make your child sit down, like you can't be here. Like, let me just have an open conversation. The conversation lasted three minutes because when I told them about the waffles and the breakfast sausage, they were kind of like, you're just a kid who made a mistake. I put that Bible in the back of my closet and I didn't touch it until my family moved away. And I don't know what I did with it. I, I actually shudder to think what I did with that Bible because part of me thinks I just threw it in the garbage and that's mean and that's wrong, but it's just a book and I ordered it because I wanted breakfast sausages and waffles. And I'm happy to report that this past couple weeks was my birthday and I got my own waffle maker. So now anytime I want to make waffles, mom, dad, Ashley, Stephanie, I can. And I can make breakfast sausage with them. And I don't need to go to church to get it, but I would love to go to an all you can eat buffet brunch and relive this. So mom, dad, Ashley, Stephanie, there is the real story and the real reason why I ordered that Mormon Bible. When you posted it on my freaking wall on Facebook, I wanted to tell it, but I also thought my facial expressions were better in uh, telling the story and the world deserved to hear why I ordered the Mormon Bible in the third grade. Anyways, thank you so much for sticking around and listening to some of the most embarrassing stories that has ever happened to me. I hope you enjoyed it because there's gonna be more of them because shit always happens to me. Mwah. Be amazing, be fun, be creative, but more importantly, be nice to everyone and anyone. You don't know where people come from, so that's it. Have a great day, and I hope I can get this to you soon because that was fun. Bye, guys. Remember, guys, if you want to see my videos and get notified about them, you have to subscribe and you gotta hit the bell or you won't know.